Praise the Lord. Greetings to you all in the precious name of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I thank you, God, uh, for keeping me alive and well. I thank God for keeping all of us that are watching me right now alive and well and healthy. Um, praise God. Anyways, uh, we're going through some trying seasons right now uh, with COVID-19 very unusual circumstances that the world is going through. A lot of pain and a lot of suffering, a lot of deaths, but God is a good God. Let me assure you, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Um, I wanna to relate today's circumstances to something that a child of God can do in, in this unusual circumstance that we're facing. I wanna bring your attention to the book of Esther in the Bible, Esther was of a Jewish descent. She was found favored with the king um, Ahasuerus while he was seeking for a new wife. He got rid of his old queen for her disobedience and Esther was chosen for her beauty among many other women or females that uh, came, uh, came you know, to be his wife. Esther was chosen. Now the king's chief advisor who was also the second in command, his name was Haman, he did not particularly care for Esther's guardian whose name was Mordecai. Mordecai also was a Jew. He refused to follow all the decrees that Haman was starting to bring up with. Haman particularly didn't care for him, hated him, and because Mordecai was a Jew, he targeted all the Jews, all the Jews that lived in that country. Um, Esther chapter 3, if you get a chance, please read it and you will get the whole background of what's going on. It talks about how Haman told the king that he needs to come up with a new decree or a new law that everybody should um, pay respect to Haman and all the, you know, so all the king's officials and everybody have to bow down and kneel, kneel and, and pay respect to Haman and, uh, and the king. And king thought that was a good idea for, you know, for the people. So he, he signed that into law. Mordecai refuses. He sees Haman, but he refuses to kneel and pay respect to Haman because thou shalt worship the Lord your God only. That was the Jewish, you know, that's that's a command given by God. So Mordecai said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to worship him and just because, or not worship him, not kneel down. Every time I see him, I'm not going to kneel down. I, I love the Lord, Lord my God. Haman finds out about this and Haman particularly focuses on Mordecai. In three verse, Esther chapter 3, verse 8 and 9, Haman informs the king that there is a certain people in the land whose customs are different. Let me read that to you. Then Haman said to King Ahasuerus, There is a certain people scattered and dispersed among the people in all the provinces of your kingdom. Their laws are different from all the other people, and they do not keep the king's laws. Therefore, it is not fitting for the king to let them remain. If it pleases the king, let a decree be written that they be destroyed. So basically, Haman is asking that let this people, just because I hate Mordecai, let this people be completely eradicated. Let them be destroyed. Let us just go ahead and kill them because they, they refuse, they're staying in our land, but they're refusing to follow the king's laws. And of course, the king thinks that's a good idea. They find a day where all the Jews are going to be annihilated. Um, Esther is in the in in the palace. She's you know living her queen life. I don't know if she heard about it, but Mordecai had to inform her in Esther chapter four, verse one through three. We read about how Mordecai, once he found out that all the Jews were going to be killed, he bitterly wept, and all the Jews were weeping and wailing because their death day is coming. And you know that nobody was going to be escaping this. All the Jews, everybody, young, old, babies, old people, everybody, women, uh, men, everybody was going to be killed that day. And also this news went through all the provinces of the kingdom and everybody found out and all the Jews are utterly wept, weeping and you know, very disappointed, very discouraged. Um, this is against them. This is coming just against the Jews, you know, and I can't imagine what they were going through. Everybody is in sackcloth and ashes, which was customary for Jews uh, to mourn that way. Esther chapter 4, verse 13 through 16, it talks about Mordecai told them to answer Esther, do not think in your heart. So Esther finds out about this and Mordecai gives the message to Esther. Do not think in your heart that you will escape in the king's palace more than any of the other Jews. For if you remain completely silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise from the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet who knows whether you have come to the kingdom for such a time as this. 
So Mordecai, even though deep down, he knew Esther was placed in the king's palace for a purpose. If where you are at your workplace, wherever you may be right now, let me tell you, God has a purpose and a plan. That's why he has given you the, po the position that you're in right now. I pray that the challenge that you're facing, that you will turn that into an opportunity. And Esther listens to all this that Mordecai told him, you know, and told her and she, verse 16 says, Go gather all the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me, neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king which is against the law and if I perish, I perish. So their only hope which Mordecai found was Esther going to the king and letting the king know that, you know, this request uh, that is placed by Haman to, to perish all the Jews, to kill all the Jews. Hopefully, you know, the king will feel uh, pity towards Esther the queen and, and pull that decree back and, and take it out. But this is already a sign thing. Usually they go ahead and go with the decree. It's impossible for the king to go ahead and turn it back. But however, Mordecai is having hope and he's having faith. This is a last minute thing. God, if you place Esther there, you have a plan. Wherever you are placed, God has a plan for you. Let me tell you, when you're going through this COVID-19 in your workplaces, in your schools, wherever you may be placed, I pray that you will spread the word of God. You will use this opportunity, the challenge that the whole world is facing. Use this an opportunity to spread the word of God. Let's use this time not to waste it and not to mourn like how the worldly people mourn. Let's use this time to lift up the name of Jesus. Coronavirus can be can be eliminated. It can be eradicated if you, as a child of God, will fast and pray. Esther, um Yes, Esther has to go to the king and that's not an easy thing. The king has to usually call the queen to come to him. But as Mordecai, is, he's really encouraging Esther to find a way to get to the king before all of us are killed. And don't you think that you will remain either? You remember, you are a Jew. You're going to be killed too. So you need to do something about it. So Esther, I know she's a fee, probably a feeble lady, but God gave her the boldness. And she said, everybody, man and child, everybody fast for three days and night. And we're going to do the same. And we're going to pray. We're going to fast and pray. This is the right time. Let, let me encourage you. Fasting and prayer is very powerful. Fast and pray. Daniel used to fast and he used to pray a lot. He used to pray three times a day. Let me tell you, if you have backslidden in your prayer, if you have backslidden in spending time with the Word of God, if you have backslidden in spending time with the Holy Spirit, if you have backslidden speaking in tongues and, and going back away from the Lord into other things, let me call you right now to back into God's presence, back into your Father's arms. I want to encourage you to fast and pray. Fasting is very powerful. You don't understand how, how powerful fasting is. When you fast, you're asking, Abba, Father, I am putting everything away. I'm putting all the pleasant food away, God, all the delicious food everything that surrounded me everything from the world I'm putting it away I'm sitting in your presence I need you God I need you right now God there are people dying I pray for New York I pray for Florida I pray for California for China for Italy for Spain a lot of leaders a lot of people are don't know what to do at this time they're, they're waiting for a vaccine they're waiting for medication they're waiting for this virus to stop but you know what you as a child of God can pray to the living God he is a true God Jesus loves us and he wants us to come back he wants you to come back prayer and fasting is the only way God says in Mark chapter 9 verse 29 there was a deaf and dumb spirit that was bothering a child the father brought the child to the disciples they couldn't get the demon out and all these people are watching him but Jesus comes out and tells him this kind can come out by nothing but by prayer and fasting if you pray and you fast and you get on your knees I'm not telling you to just give give up everything if you cannot fast right away do half a day drink some juice if your sugar drops you can do some things to give up some things that you're eating that that you don't need to eat you know Spend this time, focus it on the Word of God, focus it in God's presence. Come back to God, come back to God and you know, let Him, let him take over the world. Let Him take over what's going on in, in a lot of countries right now. Let death toll stop, let, let diseases stop, let the contagious coronavirus stop in Jesus' name. You can do it. If we all as Christians, if we come together and we hold hands and we pray and we fast together in your houses, when you, if you can sit in your room, in your 
it, wherever you may be, if you can pray and fast, you might be isolated in a place. Use this time to pray and fast. Read the Bible. I told you in the previous video, use this time to, to get, get, get to know the Father. Get to know Jesus. He's so wonderful. When you give up everything and give that time, give Him some time in your life. In a day, we ran around here and there. You know, we have groceries in the fridge, but we still went and bought more groceries. We had clothes in the closet, in our, in our bedrooms, and we had enough clothes, but we still go went and bought more clothes. But now it has come to a point where groceries are no more. There's not a lot of groceries stocked up in the in the stores. There's not a lot of clothing stores open. There's not a lot of cafes and places that are open where people can just go and sit and enjoy and have a relaxing time. Everybody is in their houses. Everybody is secluded right now. You use this time maybe God is using this time to call people back come back to me come back to me you know the father's heart is this willing father's heart is just waiting for you he's yearning for you as a child of God come back to God if you can fast and pray I really really encourage you use this time to fast and pray you can do it it might feel really hard the first couple of days but you know what do it half a day and then next day do a full day if you need more time to get to that point, do some intermittent fasting. But don't forget, you cannot just fast and not do anything else. Get into God's presence. Get into God's presence alone or with family. Get back into the Word. Read. Start reading the Bible. Start, you know, start praying for the country. Start praying for the nations. Start praying for people that are in the hospitals dying. We need the Lord more than anything right now. We need Jesus in our life. We need the Lord. The second coming of Christ is very close, let me tell you. You. believers be very prepared I'm not just saying this it says in the Bible those who has an ear let him hear if you have an ear hear please hear when a lot of pastors and when a lot of evangelists are on on online don't just bypass them don't just say oh my god I'm just so tired of hearing this those who have an ear let him hear behold I am coming quickly all these things are happening because God wants to get your attention God loves you very much my friend hallelujah and Proverbs chapter 1 verse 3 it says but whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm Psalms 91 1 he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. God is in control. If God is for you, who can be against you? No virus can come near you. You claim that in, with the, in the name of Jesus. God, I'm speaking out words of faith. No plague shall come near my dwelling, my family, my children. You plead the blood of Jesus over them. The precious living blood of Jesus Christ. You plead it over your cars. You plead it over your house. You plead it over your workplaces. You plead it over your relatives. You plead it over over, your, over believers, other people that you know, plead it over them. Hallelujah. God's blood is so powerful. Again, let me encourage you, fast and pray. May God bless you with these words. Amen.